What's going on, everybody? I am DadBod. In tonight's Everest tutorial, we are dealing with um, dialogue and in heavy detail. Uh, there are a lot of different things that you can do to make uh, certain dialogue appear, have certain kind of cutscenes happen. Now, keep in mind, this isn't like Lua cutscenes, which is a little bit more advanced. This is going to be mainly just for dialogue, how to get certain uh, faces up on the screen, how to make the text look a certain way and exactly what you need to do to do that. So let's get started. Get in, loser. We're going to the internet. All right, so first and foremost, a big shout out to Hagrid Swagger who put this map together, pretty much detailing the majority, if not everything that you need to know about dialogue, and how to put that together. We're gonna really quickly go over, before we get to the mapping part of the video, uh, just how to set these dialogue triggers and how that looks. And if at any time something doesn't look right, I have left a link to this map with all of the information that's included into it uh, in the description below. I'm just throwing it in my Google Drive. That way you can download it and kind of dissect it yourself. So let's, uh, let's first look at how the triggers work. All right, so in Ahorn, we want to make sure that we have uh, placements, triggers, and we can go to uh, Dialogue, Cutscene, Everest, and when we drop that, we've already got one in place, so we're going to take a look at how this is. So any time that Madeline steps into that trigger, it will trigger this event, unless we have only once selected. And in most cases, you want that dialogue trigger to only trigger one time, or it could get annoying. Like if you have it at the very beginning of a room and it's not an easy room and you keep dying and then you have to go through that cutscene trigger again, that's just really not good. We can also see down here that we can have this trigger end the level once it's complete. So that's always an option too. If you don't wanna have a heart at the end, you would have something like that. Your X, Y position is just the position on the map that it is. The width and height is how big the actual trigger is. And then we have the death count. So this determines the exact amount of deaths required to activate a dialogue trigger. The easiest example is in Farewell. So the very last screen of Farewell, if you die enough times, it triggers another cutscene where Madeline and Madeline are talking. You can do something like that. And then this is probably one of the most important things is the dialogue ID. The dialogue ID is the unique key that allows the game to look where is the, you know, where is this cutscene and what is happening in it. So you could see that Hagrid Swagger put a very long and detailed dialogue ID. You can have it whatever you want. It just has to be unique from all the other ones. So now let's dig into the English.txt and see what it looks like. All right, so in the English.txt, there's tons of great resources here just to kind of reference. So anything in the hash mark, pound symbol, is just stuff that the game is not going to pay attention to. They're just notes for you. So it shows that the pound symbol, the start of line counts as a comment. Uh, to include in dialogue, use a backslash and then the pound if you want to actually use that in the dialogue. The period will uh, cause a pause unless escaped with a backslash period. Uh, so when you're doing like Mr. Oshiro, we want to make sure that it is done out like this rather than like this or else it'll say Mr. Pause Oshiro. So just certain things like that that we can really dig into. Uh, 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 inline text command. So if we want wavy text, impact text, all this kind of stuff you'll see in a little bit. So let's first look for this trigger here, which is right here. So in our English.txt, we want to have that trigger ID equals enter. And we've got a couple, couple things here. So anytime somebody is talking, we have these brackets here. And the person talking is the first name here. Now keep in mind it is all caps. So in this case it's Madeline, 
Uh, we're gonna go through all the different names that you can get. When you put that name in, it pulls up her portrait and then you can use it in whatever way you want. The next word that follows Madeline is the direction that she is going to be facing or what side it's gonna be on. Normal calls upon the portrait that is being used. So there are a lot of different facial expressions that Madeline has. Normal is just the, the first one in the list and we're gonna go through all of those in just a sec. And you're gonna see, like I said, a ton of different stuff. So you're, you're gonna be able to load this map, play it and read the English.txt as you're going to see exactly why things are working the way that they're working. So let's go ahead and hop into this. We'll check it out. I hope this was informative. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. If you have any other questions, hit me up down there as well. Like I said, everything is linked and that's all we have. If you're not members of the channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and enjoy the video. Oh, <laughs> 